Well, let's get started. And Ghana is on high alert after jihadist attacks in Togo over the weekend. Uh, as John Ghana Burkina security patrols resume along the border in the north. Now, the joint security patrols resumed on Monday, July 22, 2024, and were conducted around the Bito and Boko sectors of the borders. The jihadists attacked the Togolese military camp at a village of Pekankadi near the border with Burkina Faso. Now, let's share with you how this has been and what it really entails for us here in Ghana. Uh, if you look at the numbers, now it's uh, really the location is, is the Togolese military camp at the village of Pekakandi, and it, it happened on the 20th of July 2024. Now, the, there were some six casualties, six soldiers were killed, several raw materials were also looted. So, trying to break down the attack for you. So, there you have it that it happened on the 20th, and, and we have six casualties already. Now, the Saturday attack left around six soldiers dead, as I've told you already, and several Rome war materials looted by the terrorists. Uh, so, this is what you see in the video that we'll be showing you here. You can see, you know, military men there. Now, in this video released by the jihadists claiming responsibility for the attack, uh, dozens of... Uh, you know, uh, military people and military accoutrement were affected in this. Uh, you can clearly see some shootings uh, uh, happening there. And this is a video released by the jihadists uh, there who uh, have since claimed responsibility. You see dozens of attackers on motorbikes in this video. Uh, you know, they are seen climbing the outer HESCO barriers, shooting from top. Uh, into the camp. Uh, the gate of the base is wide open. Two armored vehicles were left, uh, you know, behind. Join us now uh, is my colleague Elias Otanko, who has been monitoring the situation from the northeast region. Uh, Elias has been uh, really gathering more in info on this. Elias, I'm grateful to you for joining. Uh, what has been happening in Togo? Can you give us a brief? Well, a lot has been happening uh, in Togo uh, regarding the security situation in this country. Mm. Uh, on the 14th of July, we understand there was a failed coup in Togo. And then on 20th of July, uh, as you show in the vi video, the, uh, the jihadists attacked uh, a military outpost near the border with Burkina Faso, uh, killing six uh, soldiers and uh, seizing or looting several other or large quantity of war materials. Mm. Uh, as we understand, these jihadis are based in Burkina Faso and they actually move mm. from the territory of Burkina Faso into Togolese territory uh, to carry out this particular attack where mm. uh, this particular outpost is situated and the, the Burkina Bay border is just about 10 uh, to 15 kilometers and this is a hotspot or a place where the jihadist activities is very high. Uh, and so, yes, the jihadists have claimed responsibility for this particular attack. Uh, they have released audios and videos uh, of this particular attack. And uh, as we understand, the police forces or the police authorities have reinforced their men in that particular area. But as, uh, the security situation still remains very fluid. Mm. Uh, since Sunday, uh, there have been several people that are moving from this area to uh, the capital of the Savings region, which is Dapango. Today, we have videos of several dozens of Burkina Bays and Togolese in this area moving to uh, bigger towns, uh, for instance, the Dapango and other areas mm. uh, in, in Togo. Okay, so they are fleeing from the conflict zone to, 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 to safer havens. In Togo, is that the, the, the understanding you are, put, you, are, you are giving us? Exactly, many people are fleeing this particular area, and mind you, this area uh, had already been uh, evacuated. The residents in this area had already been evacuated some time back in 2021 by the Togolese authorities. Mm. In fact, most people that had been living in this area had been asked to leave so that. It will serve as a buffer zone for the Togolese authorities to be able to uh, fight the jihadists. So mm. a few number of residents were still there or were begin began to come back to this particular 
areas when these particular large scale attacks occurred and mm -hmm. from uh, the checks uh, that we have made in this particular area and within sympathizers uh, of the, the jihadist group there could be two reasons for this attack as we understand first uh, it could be because uh, the Togolese forces are carrying out uh, inroad operations in Burkina Faso because we know that the jihadists are mostly based in Burkina Faso and so there are times that Togolese forces had to cross the border to, to Burkina Faso territory to pursue those uh, 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 jihadists. So one, that could be the reason. And uh, another reason is that the jihadists uh, mm -hmm. carry out this large scale attack just to indicate their readiness for the establishment of a new matica. And in a new matica means a new region. Mm -hmm. uh, as we understand, just uh, uh, at the end of June, there was a new matica that was created for these jihadists uh, in Niger. Mm -hmm. And so this large scale attack could mean uh, or could, it's an indication that the jihadists are indicating that they are ready uh, to establish a new region in Togo. So That's these are two reasons why uh, there could be this particular attack last Saturday. Mm. Uh, but we've heard of the fact that six military men died. Did none of the jihadists die in this particular, you know, uh, battle that went on? As you saw in that particular video, the Togolese authorities did not have enough time to respond. So as we gathered, the jihadists were able to freely uh, overrun the bases and move on their motorbikes uh, into uh, the, the, the Broken Bay territory. So there was no any response from the Togolese authorities. Uh, from the time the jihadists land attack to the time that they completely withdraw uh, from the base that ha that had been completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. So as we speak, Togolese forces have not uh, given any indication that there was uh, some jihadists were killed, and also jihadists have not given indication that they lost men. In most cases, when they lose men, they announce it. Uh, this particular case, they did not announce it, mm -hmm. uh, probably indicating that they did not lose any men uh, okay. in this particular battle. Let's talk about security along the common togo burkina Ghana border. What has been the situation since this attack? It's been very fluid, uh, as we understand, uh, the military, the Ghanaian military and the Burkina Faso military uh, began joint patrol on Monday. Mm. Uh, this, uh, as we understand, is directly as a result of, of this attack in Togo mm. and also as a result of the field coup where we understand many Togoli uh, 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 forces that took part in this field coup are currently fleeing into Ghana. And this particular joint patrol had uh, been in place since 2021 or since 2019, but uh, since the Broken Abbey broke, away, broke from uh, ECOWAS to form their own alliance state, mm. Uh, this kind of patrol has slowed uh, but as a result of this particular attack we saw a resumption of these patrols last monday and as we understand the ghanaian forces the broken Bay, are currently patrolling uh, or carrying joint patrols along this particular border they have been tight security as we understand uh, as a result of this particular attack um, uh, security forces along the border have been put on high alert uh, they have been constant or increased uh, military activities along this particular uh, common border. Did, did I hear you oh. say there's been a failed coup attempt in Togo? When did this really happen? It looks like that was party. on July 14th, six days after this particular attack. Mm. Uh, mm. Seven, six, right. Quite interesting. Uh, you're still here on the post, but let's let's uh, uh, broaden uh, this uh, conversation and bringing a security analyst, Adip Sani. Um, who is joining us via Zoom. We'll also connect with Upper East Regional Minister. Uh, let me start with you, Adib Sani. Grateful to you for joining us. Now, what's your own reading of the situation at hand? Can you come again, please? Yeah, I'm asking of, uh, I'm, I'm sure by now you also have a certain intel about what happened in Togo, the togo Burkina uh, border. That really has a tendency of, of also affecting the Ghanaian community along the border. And I'm asking, What's your own reading of what really happened on, on, on that borderline? Um, I've spoken with some contacts, um, not just in Ghana, but in Togo. And uh, it's very consistent with what Elias has indicated. Um, this is a cross-border attack. And it's not exclusive to Togo, and it's not the first time. Indeed, just 
about um, some three days ago, there was a statement from the Defense uh, Ministry of Niger indicating that a number of their soldiers were also killed uh, during an operation between the uh, between Niger mm -hmm. and Burkina Faso. Okay. So um, it is safe to say that Burkina Faso is the haven for all of these terrorist groups, especially Jamaa, Nusra, and Islami, well, Muslimi. Uh, that is responsible for a lot of the attacks in um, Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Niger, mm -hmm. and of course in Togo. Like I indicated, it's not the first time. Mm. Um, there's been a lot of operations within uh, that area, but I don't think that has been enough mm. to disincentivize the terrorists from staging these sort of attacks. That is very similar to other terrorist groups. I mean, when you take a closer look at the modus operandi of Al-Shabaab in Somalia, um, they besiege a military base uh, with all the firepower you can imagine, they overrun it and they seize a lot of the military hardware. Similar okay. techniques was used um, mm -hmm. in the, the attack uh, with uh, the Cabo, Cabo Delgado uh, province in Mozambique. And a lot of other terrorist groups have used similar techniques in other countries. But I'm particularly concerned about how this united ECOWAS is particularly also the initiatives uh, such as Accra Initiative with mm -hmm. the formation of the Sahel Alliance between Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. It has disjointed our efforts towards curbing the, the spate of um, uh, jihadism within the sub-region. And I've always indicated that the more disunited we are, the more strengthened these terrorists become. And according mm -hmm. to the Global Terrorism Index, about two years ago, Burkina Faso is uh, the second most impacted country by terrorism globally. And the region accounts for almost half of all terrorist attacks globally. So surely it is a matter of grave concern, especially for countries such as Ghana. Okay. Now, um, you, you mentioned that once we have a, a disunited front, it makes our, you know, our fight against uh, jihadists quite porous. If our leaders know this, why are we not trying to patch up, to ensure that we present a united front to win this, this, this fight? Well, it's a, it's a challenge, my brother. And I'm, as a close watcher of um, terrorist movements mm -hmm. and uh, someone who has been uh, very participative so far as a lot of these initiatives is concerned, I am um, very worried about the number of initiatives we have. We have the Joint Tax Force, MINUSMA, Accra Initiative. We have... Uh, uh, a whole lot of other ones that's splintered in nature and everybody asking for money from everywhere, mm -hmm. all right? So if we are able to come together mm -hmm. under one umbrella, um, so everything would be uh, synergized, okay? I think we'd be winning the war. Unfortunately, this has also become business. I, I mean, unfortunate mm -hmm. for some mm -hmm. people who would easily run to the West, especially EU, US, oh, we are under attack, we need money, mm -hmm. okay? And I think that is where the problem is. So I would expect also the Americans, the Europeans, to tell our leaders, look, oh, look, put your acts together, come together under a single umbrella, mm -hmm. then we are willing to support. But if you support this, you support that, you know, it's not synergized in any way, but the mm -hmm. hope for us was the Accra Initiative. Okay. Um, unfortunately, with the formation of the Sahel Alliance and because of the lack of trust mm -hmm. between these members of the Sahel Alliance and other ECOWAS countries, mm -hmm. it is a matter of grave concern, okay. coupled with the military takeovers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So until we are able to bring all of these countries together and find um, a common solution to the, our differences, these terrorists would continue being on the offensive. And I, you, you cannot run away from the fact that they are targeting everybody. And Ghana, of course, is not excluded. Mm. This must be a worrying situation for all of us, you know, on the continent, especially Sub-Saharan Africa at, at this moment. Where do we start from? <laughs> okay, let me tell you the full facts of the matter, okay? Mm -hmm. Our approach, I, I, I must say confidently, without mincing words, is not working. Uh, look, I have been very much part of a uh, parcel of this. We have attended a lot of international conferences. 
The last one was, was I think, last year mm. when we had people from all across West Africa and beyond coming together in Accra at the conference center, the CSOs met. We deliberated. I made inputs, which was captured in the which, which was captured in the final communique. Mm. Then the heads of states came to adopt it. But let me tell you that our approach is not working because it's been so militarized. And when you look at the movements of terrorists and the incidents of terrorism mm. in 2016 and compare it to date, you realize that we, the terrorists are winning. You cannot run away from it. So what we are saying is, and as the executive director of the Jetski Center for Human Security and Peace Building, we are advocating for human security to be upheld as a comprehensive framework to deal with the myriad of security challenges we face. Okay, mm. So issues of marginalization, in Ghana, there are concerns about our treatment of the full base. Just about two weeks ago, had did not been the timely intervention of uh, the IGP, Dr. Dampari, lives would have been lost uh, in Pandai when the community attacked the palace of the Fulani chief. There was a, a over a 90 year old woman and uh, a toddler who couldn't escape. But the police had to, I was on phone with the IGP. 12 midnight, he was coordinating his commanders on the ground who intervened and saved these individuals. Unfortunately, however, the house was not, the palace was not saved. It was burnt, okay? Mm. Uh, recent incidents um, involving more injustices against Fulanis is a worrying phenomenon that needs to be uh, addressed. Issues of youth unemployment. According to the Ghana Statistical Service, close to 2 million people are uh, idle in the country. And, you know, idle hands be become very dangerous because these people approach them online with all manner of incentives and they quickly, quickly run, uh, jump onto the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. When people don't have access to basic necessities of life, water, access to sanitation services, access to healthcare, mm -hmm. um, no shelter, they have a lot more to die for than to live for. That is why the human security Directorate at the National Security Ministry is very important, okay, mm -hmm. in addressing some of these structural issues, which I, in my opinion, think is more sustainable rather than focusing on our strength towards home visas, armored personnel carriers, and the rest, cannons. No, I don't think that is the solution. In as much as it is important because it shows for us, I think the most important uh, way to handle this is to ensure that the humans are developed. Mm. But, but I mean, in, in this moment in time, if you're looking at humans being developed, maybe we don't have enough time because it, it, it looks almost certain that we are, we are close. If you look at how the security is preparing to respond, you've spoken about militarizing the, the response, but do you think we are, we are well prepared to deal with this as a country? Um, of course, I, I do know a lot is happening. Mm. Um, however, intelligence is not like a football match, so you don't have live commentary. So it's not everything the national security would tell us, but a lot of work is happening. Um, however, mm. there are some concerns because in the past, uh, some arrests have been made. Um, some individuals have been killed in combat in Burkina Faso only for us to uh, realized later they had had access to Ghana. Um, our borders still remain a major challenge. To what extent have we leveraged uh, technology, such as drone technology, mm. to keep tap of individuals who come in and go out of the country? Besides, when you go to the border towns, um, there's no difference between Ghana and Burkina Faso or Ghana and Togo. Mm -hmm. People live in Ghana, they work in Togo, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So how do we deal with it? the intelligence gathering agencies, how are they able to progressively collaborate with the local communities, especially through their chiefs, opinion leaders, um, and identifiable groups to get them to be very much part and parcel of that process mm. is also an, a, another issue. Civil society, the National Security Ministry, to what extent has it involved civil society in this advocacy progress, pro process? Because we keep talking about see something, say something. Then you go out there and ask people, hey, what is it you have to see to say? And for us at the Center for uh, 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 Security, we at a point went out to speak, to gather some information. 
about what exactly people need to see. And believe it or not, some said they were looking for bearded people mm -hmm. because they suspect they are the terrorists. So that should tell you the level of ignorance about all of these. And so we came out with a list of exactly what are some of the things you need to look out for. And I must say, it helped. But if there is deeper collaboration between civil society and the National Security Ministry, I think we should be able to get a lot more Ghanaians to be very conscious of their environment. We should get landlords to at least do some verification before giving out their rooms or apartments to uh, strangers. Uh, the community level, what do you need to look out for? Some new people have come to the community. They are buying a lot of food. They are putting it in a truck. They are taking it elsewhere. Where are they taking it to? They come, they buy a lot of fertilizer mm. and all that. So I think with education, it would also help. But I must say, a, a, good, a good job has been done, but there's no room for complacency. There's mm. still a lot more to do. Okay. So if I get up today that I'm going to, you know, a market center, places where, because we know that places where people do gather become easy target, I should not be afraid because, I, I, you know, the, 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 the defense or the security setup uh, has my back covered. No, not, not completely. Uh, maybe 90%, but you also have to do the 10%. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm concerned about uh, public spaces in Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go to the mall, there's no security check, nothing. I mean, countries such as Kenya, maybe because they have suffered terrorist attacks before, uh, they take it much more seriously, okay? Mm. There's no metal detector checks. You go in, you come out, um, it's an easy target. Um, for some hotels, um, you, they, they do some security checks, but it's not very comprehensive because they want to save time. They don't want to have a long queue. Mm. Um, we can use technology uh, that will be able to tell. Maybe there's uh, a gunpowder-related item in the vehicle, whether it's an explosive or bullets, okay? Mm. Um, but generally, as Ghanaians, we need to maintain some level of situational, environmental, and personal awareness always, okay? Mm -hmm. If you see an individual taking pictures of sensitive uh, locations, such as the Jubilee mm -hmm. House, such as military uh, uh, infrastructure, secretly, you need, to have, you need to ask questions about it. And sometimes terrorists also engage in dry runs. I mean, they can uh, pretend to bump into the studios of multimedia just so to gather information. When you catch him, then you go like, oh, sorry, I think I was going to the next building, then I came into your building. Mm. Uh, we have relatives who, when they become rad radicalized, they change. I mean, they don't want to watch TV again. They don't want any sort of entertainment. They go like, hey, everything about this is worldly. Mm. Join us, let us do this and do that. These are people who live with us, okay? okay? Mm. And we should be able to be confident enough to report some of these uh, action. So you and I have a very important role to play, and I'm particularly excited we are discussing this because it is invariably part of multimedia's commitment mm. to ensuring that the citizenry is informed about some of these issues. Mm. Mm. So, so it means that the say something, uh, the see something, say something is still something that we should, you know, keep an eye for. But, but you said something about the public not being aware, and that you know, you should, be, you should be aware of your environment. But are there critical things that, you know, we should be making the public aware, such that when they see something, they can actually decide that this is probably something I need to report, or this one, I just need to, uh, you know, close my eyes to it? Absolutely. Um, there, there are a lot of uh, these things we cataloged in, in the past. Uh, I think the see something, say something is somewhat vague. All right. Uh, we tell people, oh, if you see something, then you have to talk about it. But the question is, what exactly do people need to see? Mm -hmm. My grandmother in the village, uh, how do I make her understand all right, what exactly they need to uh, see? So second, first, um, like I indicated, mm -hmm. uh, when, for example, I mean, this is quite basic. When you see a bag at a marketplace, okay, mm -hmm. or at a public place, mm -hmm. so to speak, unattended to, don't go pick it up. Okay. Um, just call the authorities, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe it could be an improvised explosive device, okay. all right? So if you see a bag that is unattended to, uh, you need to say something. Um, when 
you, you, you are, you, maybe your work is very much related to the market, you're selling. And these individuals you don't know come to buy large quantities of food. They are, they, you don't know them to be suppliers, but they are buying it. They are taking it somewhere you don't understand. You need to ask questions. In some cases, hmm, they even buy fuel. There's this story about a driver who was contacted to supply fuel. He never knew he was supplying fuel to the jihadists. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they got him to do. Okay. When uh, someone comes to buy large quantities of um, uh, um, potassium nitrates, okay, fertilizer, mm -hmm. he's not a farmer. They just acquire large quantities. And we are taking it to Burkina Faso, we are taking it to Mali. You need to ask questions because Ghana, according to sources, has become a logistics hub for some of these terrorists okay. because mm. not once, not twice, okay. trucks impounded in Burkina Faso reveal after investigation that they had come from Ghana. In fact, there's also been reports of um, improvised explosive devices going off an investigation revealing that the cable came from a cable company in Ghana, mm. okay? Mm. So mm. all of these is something mm. we need to ask questions about okay. and to let the authorities know. When some individuals, you don't know, they, they come to rent a, a big house in your community, they don't come out during the day, they drive unregistered uh, uh, vehicles, vehicles. Mm. they only move at night, mm. you don't know what they are up to, they don't bring out their trash, they don't allow anyone into the compound. You have reasons to ask questions. Okay. But Ghana, mm. we are becoming like the West. But okay. I think the West is mm. now better than us because okay. we go like, oh, and the fear asset yeah. is not my business. Yeah, get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful to you, uh, Adib, for joining us. Adib Sani is a security analyst and uh, we've been talking about the uh, porosity of the Ghana Togo Burkina border. Uh, just recently that there was a shooting at the uh, Togolese military camp on the Burkina border in which six soldiers, we understand, lost their lives. So we'll keep an eye on that. But like he said, if you see something, please do say something. We'll keep it out for each other.